remember it as if it were yesterday. Dr. Luke, you have asked me, you have invited yourself into my home to give an account of what I saw that starry night. It was many years ago, but yet it's as if it was yesterday. And as I can remember it as I can remember talking to you right now. There were shepherds in the field keeping their eye on the sheep, their lambs. It was a quiet night except for the wrestling in the town of Bethlehem off in the distance. And there was a bustle of people in that town that day trying to find a place to stay. The emperor had called a census and everyone had to go to the, the town of their lineage. And Bethlehem was the birthplace of King David. I was on watch. I was a young man at the time. This was so many years ago. I was a young man at the time. And, you know, everyone had fallen asleep but myself. I was awake. I could not sleep for some reason. I was counting stars and even that didn't put me to sleep. Even counting sheep failed to do that. But what I saw that night has to be written down. And Dr. Luke, you are the man that can do this. That night the, star, the stars filled the sky as if somebody had thrown a, a million diamonds into the sky and it was bright and there was a light illuminating the town of Bethlehem off in the distance. The only sound was the occasional bark of a dog and the full moon was rising on the eastern horizon. I saw something very interesting on the horizon. There were a man and a, pulling a donkey that, which seemed to have two riders on it. And as I blinked my eyes and looked at my other companions to see if they were awake to see this, I looked up and they were gone off the horizon. I never thought much of it till I don't know how much time it passed by the time the moon had risen above the horizon. Um, I had almost forgotten about that trio on the hill. But Bethlehem was asleep and there was no room for anyone to find lodging and I just assumed that these two or three people who had come could not find lodging and so they found lodging out in the fields with the sheep. And not thinking much of it until all of a sudden the sky burst, exploded with angelic voices the voices were clear. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. And we were before that. The There was a man standing in front of us. And he was frightening. It, it woke up everyone. And we had our faces pinned to the ground. Our nose was sniffing dust. And you know what this man said? He said, don't be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you this day is born in the city of Bethlehem a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And I just... And all of a sudden he was gone. But a host of heavenly angels burst forth in song, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Goodwill toward men. A Savior in this time? Yes, we need a Savior. Romans had us by the throat. It taxes to death. 
Children go without food, the sick, the lame, sit in the streets while the religious body, the pillars of our society, walk by them. And if it's the Sabbath, <laughs> you'll never get any help. Because that would be working on the Sabbath. But that night, I will not forget. So, the logical direction for us to go was over the horizon where those individuals had disappeared. The man leading a donkey and the, it looked like a woman. And she may have been pregnant. And God forbid, God help that poor woman to be pregnant in a time like this, bearing a child into this world. But needless to say, uh, the shepherds, the other, my companions, my fellow shepherds and I, we made a beeline in that direction, the eastern, eastern direction, uh, over that horizon where those individuals disappeared. And as we got to the the ridge, uh, we looked down, there was a little hill, and we looked down and it was, like, it was as if um, the moon had, had concentrated all its light on this, this manger scene. You had, um, you had a manger out in the middle of this field, um, and there he was the, there was a man, and there was a woman, and they were looking into this manger, and as if it was as if there was a glow coming from this manger. So as we got closer, we could see more defined. There was a baby in this manger, a little child. Uh, it couldn't have been more than a couple of hours old, and uh, there was no cry. Uh, it was like there was a peace, there was a serenity about that that circle. So we gathered, uh, my fellow shepherds and I, we gathered around that uh, that scene, this man. He looked like a carpenter. His hands were rough, like a carpenter's hands. Um, the woman was very young, and the donkey was sitting there just nice and quiet. And uh, we stared at this baby this baby lying in the manger. And I said to myself, is this the savior of the world, a child? And the, the husband, of course, he had a smile on his face and uh, the mother, she was peaceful and she was at rest, but she was looking at this child, pondering as if she was pondering in her heart what this child will become. And she related the story to us as if we were to believe it that um, this child was spawned by the Holy Spirit. And you know, <laughs> I don't want, you know, it was a, a new baby and there was a lot of uh, you know, it's it's a you know we've seen lambs come into the world and uh, and uh, but this was a child coming into the world and uh, in a time like this and usually uh, it's not a very gentle experience. But this woman who says is it had this child uh, and two hours later and uh, the father and the mother were both. Uh, gazing at this child in wonder as if uh, this child had come down from heaven. And now I know that this was the same child, this was the same boy that grew to become a man. I asked the woman what his name was. And she said the angel told her you will name him Jesus. Was this the same Jesus that they crucified on a cross? Is this what this child came into this world for? 
I would not have known that unless on the day of Pentecost there were 120 people gathered on the day of Pentecost and there was something like a mighty wind blowing in that room there was no wind blowing physically but it was the sound and people started speaking in strange tongues and I understood because they were speaking in my native language and I understood what they were saying they were saying this is the one this is the Messiah this is the King of Israel and the Holy Spirit was given to us by him and I I was so convicted to hear that he had been crucified he died for my sin he came into this world to die for my sin why he didn't have to But there was one of the disciples who talked to me at some one point. His name was John. And he said the religious leader came to Jesus at night. It was it was in the evening. His name was Nicodemus. And I he said that Jesus told him something very strange. He said, Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. How can you be born again when you're an old man? He's, Nicodemus said. Well, Jesus said, That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit. So we must be born of the Spirit. And that day on Pentecost, I was born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God descended upon me and then I understood who this baby is, who this baby was. And that's why I had to talk to you. But it wasn't you that found me. God brought you to me. Thank you, Dr. Luke. Please write this down. Do not miss a detail, and I just hope and I pray that my testimony here will help others come to know that this Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And believing in Him, He gives us the right to become the children of God, even to those who have never seen His face, but believe on His name. For there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved.